Hello and welcome to the launch of Starting Awareness Mental Wellbeing campaign. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Business and Mr. Norman Coleman from Balancholic. So Norman, thank you so very much for joining us That's today. Right. Thank you, Khan. Um, first of all, I'd like to ask you, why did you decide to become involved with this particular campaign? Well, Khan, I suppose that um, I've had a stutter from a very young age and I've done an awful lot of work in uh, trying to relieve it, I suppose. And I see uh, all the great work that Jamie is doing. And I felt that with my experience, and I would um, would love to give advice to people, particularly younger people, and other people who are frustrated and think that they have a stutter now, and it'll always be part of them, and it'll define who they are. And I've learned over the years that that isn't necessarily the case and it shouldn't be the case i would have had a i would have um i've been told that i had the devil's hand when i was a kid in that i wrote with my left hand so i'm of an age that uh, in school they changed me from writing to the left front with the left to the right hand and my folks reckoned that that's how the stutter came so I would have had a stutter since I was five and I tried various, everything, everything, speech therapy, acupuncture, uh, reflexology, um, hypnotherapy. Um, I went to Scotland to a guy, Andrew Bell, who was actually really, really good, um, but it, I fell away, the progress fell away. So. I suppose until 2003, I always felt that the stutter defined who I was. And I had this thing about, which sounds crazy now, that, that if I died, or when I die, and people would be talking and they'd say, do you know that guy Norman Coleman, he died? And they'd say, which, which fellas, which, who's that? You know, the guy would stutter. I'd have been dead, it wouldn't have mattered, but I, would, I always felt like that is who and what I would be remembered for. And I couldn't handle it. And kind of, I was in such a, um, I suppose, a state with it. It was the last thing that I thought of before I went to sleep. And it was the first thing that I thought of when I woke up in the morning. Now I know that people who, are, who have stammers or stutters don't feel like that. And some people are, are maybe much more comfortable with it and good on them. But for me, it was just something that I thought I just had to do something about. Um, and as luck would have it, um, I, 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 f I found this program in 2003 that has a fantastic support network. And that's the key. I feel that's the key, and with the likes of Jamie and the rest of the guys, like my Clochet, who are always there for you if things aren't going great, and they can, and you have that level of support. What difference did the, does the support, or did the support make to you? Well, can I always felt that, uh, having the stutter, I felt very isolated, and it was something that I would never talk to anybody about. Now, my wife obviously knew she was a, a great support to me and I had a couple of very few close friends that I would ever broach the subject with. So in general I felt that there was just this feeling of isolation in that I was the only one. I knew nobody else who had a, a stutter and, um, and this is against myself. If I did meet somebody with a stutter, I actually felt uncomfortable because I felt, and, I, and, I, and I've no idea why I thought that, but when I took part in this um, organisation and met all these fabulous people who were in the same boat as myself, it was just fantastic. It was great that you could talk, you could compare experiences of being embarrassed inside in shops and we've all gone through it 
And suddenly I felt, you know what? I'm actually not the only, I'm not a freak like. I'm not the only one that has gone through all of these things. And um, after the, the week long program was finished, you're obviously, you know, all uh, keyed up and you're doing this or whatever. And, and it's great. But like that naturally goes over a period of a couple of weeks. There's a meeting every second week then, and that was invaluable. I cannot say how valuable that was. And um, knowing that I was going there every second Tuesday, every second Wednesday night, whatever, it was fantastic. It really was. Brilliant. So you feel that um, after the first, um, kind of the first intervention, that the follow-up um, was as important as the initial, um, the initial work that was done. Absolutely. And, and, um, what sort of qualities do you feel um, a person will need if they really want to get the better of their speech impediment? Can if I could, if I could say it like this, I remember David Beckham mm -hmm. uh, got a free kick against Greece. I think it was in Old Trafford because Wembley was being done up, and it got England into a, a Euro or a World Cup, whatever it was. And there was all this about. It's amazing how David Beckham stood up and curled the, free, um, the kick around the wall and into the top corner or whatever. But David Beckham had done that a thousand times, a ten thousand times, because he practiced over and over again. And really, if, if somebody um, has something like a stutter and they are anxious to overcome it, and once they're given the technique to do it, I feel practice is everything. Like you, you, as I said before, you will come off the course and you will think, or any course that you go on to do a speech, and you will feel great, and you would, but it's to, it's to maintain it and to be so disciplined. And as I say to some of the new lads that are on the, um, the course, and I say lads, girls, girls and fellas, that it's like washing your teeth in the morning that nobody goes out without washing their teeth, or they, they, they wash their teeth before they go to bed. If you do the breathing, in, in this particular case, every morning and every, me, every evening, it goes such a long way. Even those two small things, I don't know, there's other, other parts of the course, but it's just, it's just uh, determination and discipline, and I suppose, enthusiasm to get to the to the to the um, the promised land I suppose yeah, you call absolutely, it. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. When you're working with uh, people in the business world yeah. and when you're mentoring young business young mm. businessmen and young business mm. women, um, are those similar qualities that you would instill in them? I would think so, yeah. yeah. I would think so. Like I mean I've my own business and everything to do with business is selling. Yeah. And I think that uh, you know like the few people know I have spoken to know that I would have started their own business. I'm 28 years with my own business now. And um, I'd always, and just as an example, I'd always say to them, look, don't ever get this Friday feeling. In other words, that Friday and our, the weekend starts at 11 o'clock. Go out and do the extra bit on a Friday because the person that you're dealing with is in good form. And he's more likely to, to give you a positive answer to the question. In other words, would you like to um, um, do something with our company? And also the chances are you're the only one who's doing it because so many people have got this Friday well, feeling. Yeah. So that when your speech is good and when my speech is good, I just have to tell myself, yeah. this is the time to practice. Mm -hmm. No, don't wait, like don't wait for, for as I say, don't wait for, for um, the rain to start before you fix the roof. Yeah. You just, you just, you practice, uh, particularly when things are good, put the work in then. Yeah. I suppose as well in the business world and for anybody who's um, dealing with a stutter and is beginning to work on it, they're, they're going to experience knocks along the way. Absolutely. What advice would you give people who experience those knocks, whether it's in business yeah. or whether it's dealing with a stutter? not to be too hard on yourself. Mm -hmm. 
big time. Yeah. Because, and, and I've done that mm -hmm. kind of, I've said, oh, look, you know, you know it's kind of imposter syndrome. You, you had it before, you'll always have it. You had it for whatever it was, 42 years, you'll always have it. And it's, and it's not, and all you say is, look, okay, okay, that's it. Put it behind you, get up, go again, go again, go again, go again. And it's just, it's just not to stop believing and just believe in yourself. Yeah. And this is where the support network comes in then. You know, the likes of Michael O'Shea, you know, and like, like Mike is that you can give him a ring anytime. Yeah. He, Cause he's that kind of a guy. Yeah. And, and like, so, and that's what, that's what the people uh, in, in, in the group, and um, that's what we have. It's gold, like, yeah. that's what we have. You You've know? almost answered my last question for me. I was going to ask you, what advice would you give to somebody who is um, who's suffering um, mental health issues based on the fact that they have a stutter? Oh, can, I can talk about that. I can talk <laughs> about that. Like, I was, I was so lucky in school. I was going to a fantastic school with brilliant classmates. Brilliant yeah. class, I never had a problem. Yeah. But with, with, you know, them, they never treated me any way different. But afterwards then, I really, I really, I, I found it really hard. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of reaching out yeah. and talking to somebody. Uh -huh. and because look, people are so good. Even if they don't, even if they don't understand what a stutter is, yeah. and if they don't understand what it means to you and the effect that it has on you, yeah. if you explain it to them, mm -hmm. and everybody knows somebody. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody. And, they, and, and there's, there's nothing you can say to somebody that they haven't come across. And I just think just, just reaching out mm -hmm. and not being afraid to tell people how you feel yeah. and what you're going through. Because for too long, we've been hiding. Yeah. And I hid. For years I hid. Yeah. I could get emotional here. Yeah. But, and it was, only, it was only really when it came to a head that... that it, um, um, I just got on the right road then. Right. Norman, thank you so very much Not for joining us here. Thank you. And for sharing your experiences with us. Not at all. Thank, thank you. you.